Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book The Mystery of Adam. I'm going to talk about uh, the Antichrist again today, but I'm going to talk about the destruction of the Antichrist. Now many people know that this um, prediction or this prophecy about the Antichrist um, is found in Revelation. Now many people also think that this whore or the beast, and that is maybe the difficult thing. Who is the Antichrist? The beast or the whore that sits on it? Okay. Or the whole system, of course, right? Because the beast, I mean, the whore that sits on the beast, and I'm talking about the beast out of the sea in Revelation 13, there is a beast on top. I mean, there's a whore on top of that beast. And whoever rides the beast controls the beast. Now, I said that um, it's almost like the rider and the, the beast is the same. Okay, because the beast is not going to do anything other than what the rider on the beast um, is telling that beast. Okay, so this whore on top of the beast in Revelation 13, that is determining what the beast is doing. Now, the beast in itself contains a lot more. It is a political entity. But it is not just political, it is also religious. And that's why when we look at Daniel's statue, the feet that are part of this last beast um, are part of the Roman Empire, but they, it's different. It is mixed iron, which is the Roman political system with the religious system, which is clay and brittle. It's not as strong. It depends on the iron for strength. So I have talked about that. Papacy is the whore on top of the beast that's been riding the beast for um, a long time, for 2,000 years, almost, 1,500. Why am I getting on dirty here? So this this harlot that sits on the beast, as you can you can read that in Revelation seventeen and eighteen, uh, they call it a harlot that sits on that beast and has maneuvered it for at least fifteen hundred years. It's also this little horn that I talked about in my previous video in Daniel, um, what was it? Daniel 7. They're all the same, very same thing. Okay, so here we are talking about this Babylon the Great today. Uh, Babylon the Great, that is the harlot and we can read that in um, Revelation 17. And that came out of the seven, that came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials and talked to me, saying unto me, come hither, I will show you the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay, so this whore sits on many waters. And it has been sitting on many waters. Who is this whore who has been sitting on many waters in many countries? Okay, of course, that is the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Now, I hope people understand that. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The kings of the earth are part of that beast system, okay? At least the European kings, which controlled most of the world. 
And today, it is more than just the European because we add also the United States, which came out of Europe. So they are part of the kings of the earth as well. So the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Okay, think about what fornication have they been committing. They have been following this uh, harlot, okay, this um, person on this beast, okay? one, the whore that sitteth on, sitteth on the beast. So they have committed fornication, all kinds of fornication. They intermarried in a sense. Uh, if you study European history and how a closely related um, papacy was, was with the kings of the, uh, of the earth, okay, and how they uh, you know, if there was this family and uh, most of the time they had more children, so the first one became the king and the next one became a bishop or the pope. So it, it was uh, fornication, fornication um, that they um, committed. So... So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay, what is this beast? This beast we see again in Daniel 7. Okay, Daniel 7. I talked about that in my previous video. Okay. The little horn, remember, if you look back a couple of videos back, the little horn, that's what they're talking about. It's a beast. The beast is the last beast, one of the four beasts that Daniel saw. And it had seven heads and ten horns. Um, and out of that, those ten horns, came a little horn, Okay came a little horn and it looked like a person with eyes okay that is also that woman and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colors decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication okay so this is the first, how she's described. So think about papacy. Okay. What colors are they dressed in? Scarlet. Okay. Scarlet colored beast. Okay. That's the colors of papacy. Okay. Scarlet. Um, and, and I think this is red too or something. So here again, we see names of, of blasphemy. Okay. Blasphemy. Okay. So this woman sits on this beast full of blasphemy. Seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed. Oh, here it is. In purple and scarlet colors. Purple and scarlet Okay, so this is what I was talking about. This woman, um, papacy, the church. Okay, remember? The church is a woman. This is the false church. This is the false church, and she is a harlot. And she's dressed in scarlet and uh, purple, and that's in verse 4 decked with gold, precious stones, pearls, okay? Having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of fornication. You wouldn't even believe it. Do research about papacy, how much they committed fornication, okay? The clergy, papacy, 
how much they committed fornication in the past. How much they are still committing fornication. Okay? You know, the, the, the normal priests, how much fornication um, they are committing today. People, open up your eyes. Okay? This is it right there. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlot, harlots and abominations of the earth. That is the whore. That is Babylon the Great. And I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Who has done this? Of course, the woman that sits on it. She is really drunk. Yes, others before that beast has already, you know, uh, killed, you know, the saints and the martyrs, you know, before the Roman Catholic Church even came, became um, in power. However, this woman has done far beyond, far beyond uh, the Roman Empire, the end, you know, of this political empire has done far more, far more, and is continuing it, has done it for 1,500 years, people, okay? Um, and she not only has the blood of, of all these people um you know on their hand but she is continuously deceiving people so they cannot um find Jesus or the, or even the people that have committed to Jesus and say oh yeah I you know I, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior even those people are being deceived and misled okay she has not stopped um, devouring the saints and misleading them. She has not stopped. Even, you know, when her power was um, diminished, one of her head wounds, you know, there was a, a head wound to this, this beast. Um, so, you know, she continues, she continues uh, her bad, stuff here it says in verse 8 the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into petition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is they will wonder why because they don't believe it how many people today believe that papacy is this whore very few people okay even after the ref um reformation uh the ref reformers preached this for a long time and then all of a sudden it was put aside something else replaced it saying oh no we better wait for this antichrist at the end um, he's not here. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, we don't have to worry about tribulation. Oh, the tribulation is going to come way at the end. So we've been put to sleep to what this beast is doing and is still doing. Okay, Because we see in 13 that there's going to be another beast coming out of the earth. Okay, But this beast out of the earth is giving still power to the beast out of the sea it seems like when that beast out of the earth comes on the scene that does quite a lot of um confusion but yet it still worships and bows down to the beast out of the sea we know that this beast out of the um uh the 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 earth is actually the one that gives the mark, okay? It is not this beast, it's not the harlot that gives the mark. It is actually the beast that comes out of the earth. 
and and the Bible calls it the false prophet. And that's why many people think it is actually a religious um, entity or person or whatever. But it isn't. It just bows down to the Pope and to the original beast. Because they are all one. Okay? They're all one anyways. So anyway, so this harlot right here though is what we call, most people call um, the Antichrist. It is the little horn, okay? Um, and it is Babylon the Great, the mother, it says the mother of all harlots, okay? Why is she called Babylon the Great? Because it comes out of Babylon. What is going on with Babylon? Well, Babylon, um, if you look at Babylon and what they worshipped, okay, that is exactly what these people also worship. Same kind of gods. Okay, that's why Babylon the Great. Because these gods, they came from Babylon through, well, actually from Persia, through Babylon, through um Greek, the Greek, through the Romans, and into the Catholic Church. They never changed any of this practice, this pagan practice. It's the same thing. All these gods, the Romans, the Greek, uh, the Persian, the Babylonians had, they're all the same gods. They may have different names. Look at the Egyptian gods. Same thing. They're the same gods just different names. So that's why she is called Babylon the Great. Okay, because it goes back Babylon um, to Nimrod. Okay, to all the way back to Nimrod. And if you ever want to read a good book, uh, it's called, I think, The Two Babylons. Hislop, I think, is the uh, author of that book, The Two Babylons. Uh, I think it's his lop. Um, so look it up. A good book that traces back. There's a lot of research and traces back these things that the Roman Catholic Church are practicing way back to Babylon. Okay? That's why it's called Two Babylons. That's why we're reading here Babylon the Great. Okay? I know there's people today that are saying, um, you know, this rabbit hole really goes deeper and that the Pope is today is not having as much power. Yeah, it is possible because I just said there's another beast coming out of the, uh, the earth, which is yet still bowing down to the Pope, but will have far more power, okay? but still bows down to the Pope, okay? And this whole thing about um, adding Zionism in this whole deal um, and saying, oh, this Zionism has something to do with it and being the Antichrist, I am 100% sure that Zionism is part of this whole plan, okay? Zionism was brought in to this plan. See, papacy did not only persecute the Christians, so, uh, papacy also persecuted the Jews relentlessly. Uh, Rome already did that after they kicked them out in 70 AD out of um, Judah. And they relentlessly uh, persecuted them. And then the papacy came and they relentlessly uh, persecuted them. But yet... Papacy and whoever's behind this whole thing had a plan even for the Jews, okay? Because the Jews from the beginning of Samuel's time, okay? Samuel, go go back to Samuel. Samuel 1 and 2. Um, when Samuel, when the Jews during Samuel's time, end of his Samuel's time, wanted to have a king, they already, there was already um, a, this Antichrist spirit entering uh, Judaism. And this Antichrist spirit, of course, coming from Satan. 
right then and there, he already worked on the Jews so they would they would reject uh, the Messiah. Okay, so the spirit is not just uh, papacy. It's not just there when papacy came. This Antichrist spirit came even out of Judaism. And Satan, destroyed by using false teachers, destroyed Judaism and their doctrines and made them think, they made them think that they are the great ones. They are the, the, the people of God when really they were supposed to be an instrument to bring forth Messiah and Messiah is supposed to be their king. No, they insisted, we want a king. They insisted, we want a king. We want to build the temple. This is all about us. Um, so they already, Satan already started that idea uh, way back then, okay? When they demanded a king and it just escalated. It escalated so bad, okay? And Israel, the kingdom of Israel split off, the 10 tribes split off because of this haughtiness of Judah, okay? They were so haughty that Israel didn't want to have anything to do with it. Of course, they didn't want to have anything to do with God either. So they broke off and they mixed with the Gentiles, okay? Just like actually... Um, Jacob predicted, okay, he predicted that really, that they became part of the nations, the Gentile nations. So, but I am kind of getting away from the subject, so I better go back. But what I'm trying to say is that the Jews um, already had a tendency to stray away from God from the beginning. And when papacy or when Satan thought he could reel them in and make them support this beast system, okay, this antichrist system, they were willing to do it. There were many people, many Jews that decided to become little minions of papacy, okay, so the Pope used them. Okay, they Pope used them. And I guess they were promised, of course, a lot of things. They were promised a country, their own country. They were promised, um, you know, to be great again. Okay, great again. And you dangle that little carrot and for many people that is just enough to go along. Make no mistake, it's not papacy who's behind all this. We know that. We know that the dragon is behind all this. We know that Satan is orchestrating all this. We know that Satan is using these things. Okay? He's using these things. But make no mistake, and that is what I wanted to really focus today. And that is, we are coming to the end of this harlot. This harlot is not just starting. We're coming to the end of this harlot. We're coming to the destruction of this harlot. And a lot of people don't want to see that. They think, oh, this harlot is going to be just starting sometime in the future, in the seven years, blah, blah, blah. No, this intrigue has been going on for 1500 years, people. Okay, this is coming to an end. God is tired. Um, let's see, what would we say? Drunk with the blood of the saints. Um, let me look at something very important, and that's Revelation. I'm looking it up right now. Revelation 6, and it's the, let's see, let me look at it. Uh, the sixth seal, I believe. Uh, nope, it's the fifth seal. And it starts with Revelation 6, 9. And when I heard open, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now, slain for the word of God, that includes everybody. 
but it also includes the saints, okay? The New Testament saints, but it also includes the Old Testament saints, okay? So before we go into the sixth seal, and you better watch the sixth seal, because in the sixth seal, we can see that judgment is coming, okay? Judgment is coming. Um, the wrath of God will start in the seventh seal, and the sixth seal, seal is just like a preparation okay just the preparation so if you look in this fifth seal the souls are screaming they were slain for god all the saints that were slain for god okay make no mistakes there's not just going to be tribulation at the end and slains are going to be uh, the saints are going to be slain no we've been slain throughout history pre history I mean, pre-Gentile history, that means before Christ and after Christ. The, 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 the people of God were slain and they're under the altar screaming, saying, how much longer? How much longer? They're saying it is enough. And what does he say? Um, or oh, here in 10, they say, they cried out with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? And them that dwell on the earth. This is not just the beast that is going to be punished. It is every person on this earth who had something to do with rejecting Jesus and the saints. And white robes were given into every one of them. And it was said to them that they should rest yet for a, for a little season and their fellow, um, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be uh, fulfilled. So in other words, they're supposed to be waiting just a little longer. And this is what we are having today. We have these people screaming out under the altar, the souls. Hey, how much longer? How much longer? And I'll guarantee you, it ain't going to be very much longer okay it is over pretty soon for the beast um, and for actually all of the beasts because when we see the statue in daniel this rock that falls on the feet and it destroys the whole beast okay the whole statue all four beasts okay um bringing it down is going to happen soon and I see that, of course, Revelation 17 and 18, we see that destruction. But Isaiah also prophesied that destruction. And we see that in Isaiah 47. And he, he's, he writes, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Now, who is the daughter of the Chaldeans? It's not uh, the Jews. It's not Judaism. The daughter of the Chaldeans have... Th th no, it is not. And I'm not saying that some of the Jews, Zionism, is running with the daughter of the Chaldeans and as fornication with the daughter of the Chaldeans. Now, yeah, that is very, very true, okay? But this is not, this is not Judaism. This is not the Jews, okay? This is not it, okay? This is Babylon, okay? This is fallen Babylon. It's the daughter of the Chaldeans, okay? This, this beast, not one part of that beast or these four beasts or the statue um, have anything to do with Judaism, okay? And the opposite, out of Judaism or out of Judah came the rock that, sm that smite the foot, okay? Not Judaism, but out of Judah came the rock that, s that smite um, this or destroy this daughter of Babylon, Take a millstone and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, 
Thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, but thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Okay, the Lady of Kingdoms. Who is the Lady of Kingdoms? Of Kingdoms. Okay, Lady of Kingdoms. Think about it. Who was the Lady of Kingdoms? The Lady of Kingdoms was the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, I was worth with my... Um, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given, um, oh, I need to open it up because I can't even read it. Upon, I have, I have polluted my inheritance and given them into the hands that did show them no mercy upon the ancient Hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke? Okay. And thou saidst, I shall be the lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasure, that dwellest carelessly, that says in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow. Neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee. In a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness and thou says none seeth me thy wisdom and thy knowledge it has perverted thee perverted thee and thou hast said in thine heart i am and none else beside me ha <laughs> ha therefore shall evil come upon thee Thou shalt not know from whence it rises. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stay now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth, if so be thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail, thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsel. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be a stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the powers of the flame. There shall not be a cool, a coal to warm at, none fire to sit before it. Thus shall I be into thee, with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. Now go back to Revelation and read the rest there. It's very similar. And it's obvious that what John predicted or foresaw is the same thing that Isaiah predicted and foresaw in Isaiah 47. Those are the same people. Okay, the same harlot. And there is no mistake that this harlot is papacy. No mistake. Now, for the beast out of the earth, that's a different story. It's a different story. That beast out of the earth, 
that still bows down to the harlot, okay, it's a different story. I have talked about that beast out of the uh, sea before, and I believe it's the new world order, okay? I believe that. It's not just the United States. Some people think it's the United States, but there's more to it, okay? And not necessarily the United States, but whoever is behind the United States, the shadow government, um, the deep state, that what people are pinpointing, okay? Not necessarily the United States, because the United States uh, is only uh, a pawn in this whole new world order thing. Okay, but I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to come to an end. Read Isaiah 47, read Revelation 17 and 18, and I didn't have time for 18, but 18 tells you quite a lot again about the fall of this Babylon the Great. And, um, and you know, you need to understand that this is coming. Okay, this is coming. Um, and it's coming soon. It's coming very, very soon. But when this beast is destroyed, okay, there's still going to be this other beast that needs to be destroyed, which is part of this fourth beast. Okay, uh, here they just look made it look separate. Beast out of the sea and beast out of the um, the earth. They are really a part of the same kind of beast system. And that will be destroyed very, very soon. Make no mistake. The wrath of God is close. It will happen soon. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. And this is the end for this video.